Aykan Erdemir, Foundation for Defense of Democracy, Senior Fellow. Uh, Pastor Brunson is one of the numerous Western nationals uh, in Turkish prisons, uh, but his case is the most high-profile case. Uh, he has been detained for over 21 months, uh, for 17 months uh, without an indictment, uh, and once the indictment was made public, uh, there wasn't a single concrete evidence. Uh, so for uh, the U.S. public and U.S. Congress, he is uh, the the, the the example par excellence uh, of persecution uh, for um, his religious convictions. I think uh, President Erdogan's silence is very telling. Uh, you know, in his inner circle, there were a, a number of pushbacks, but I think President Erdogan is trying to maintain some room for maneuvering. Uh, in similar cases with Russia and Germany, uh, he did take a U-turn. Uh, so this time around too, uh, he might uh, take a U-turn and he probably doesn't want to uh, restrict uh, his maneuver room. Um, there, there, there is an earlier uh, case uh, last October when the State Department introduced visa restrictions against Turkish citizens. Uh, Turkey retaliated by introducing an exact visa restriction against the US against US citizens so this time around we might expect a similar retaliation that is uh, Turkey might sanction uh, two secretaries uh, possibly the Attorney General and maybe uh, Homeland Secretary uh, and uh, beyond that of course uh, Turkey's pro-government media uh, has been pounding uh, Americans uh, and U.S. institutions hard and we, I think, will continue to see a spike uh, in anti-American uh, rhetoric uh, around the country. I think the Turkish government knows that the Injerlik Air Base is a silver bullet that you can only use once. Uh, so often uh, the, gov the Turkish government will refer to uh, blocking access to the Injerlik Air Base, uh, but refrain from uh, going forward with its threat. Uh, so this time around, I think that is also, also going to be the case. Um, yes, I think it is significant because there are five political parties in the Turkish parliament uh, with groups and of the five only uh, the pro-Kurdish HDP uh, refused to join uh, the, uh, the, the, the joint declaration uh, by other parties. Uh, as we have seen in other cases too, uh, anti-Americanism and nationalism uh, uh, create a uh, rally around the flag effect in Turkey and uh, often is the easiest way to uh, unite um, the government with the opposition uh, and the HTP uh, again and again has demonstrated uh, that uh, it will not uh, become part of uh, such group thinking uh, and has refused to join the bandwagon. Uh, yes, it's, it's ironic because, you know, HDP uh, does come uh, also from uh, a progressive tradition in Turkey that is also associated with, you know, the 68 and anti-American sentiment in Turkey. Uh, but at this point, because the HDP is refusing to join uh, the nas nationalist upsurge, uh, it uh, does appear to be the only uh, U.S.-friendly political party in Turkish parliament. Uh, Turkish-U.S. relations uh, always uh, have a repercussion uh, for Kurds, uh, not only in Iraq, but also in Syria. Uh, often moments of crisis in Turkey uh, it leads to nationalist upsurge as well as anti-Kurdish sentiment. And this anti-Kurdish sentiment is not just uh, targeted towards Kurds within Turkey, but also Kurds uh, across Turkey's borders. Uh, so we might see, uh, again, a, a spike uh, in jingoistic uh, language uh, in Turkey, and uh, we might yet again see that uh, anti-American rhetoric easily blends into uh, an anti-Kurdish rhetoric in Turkey. 
Uh, already there have been calls by uh, pundits close to the ruling AKP that Turkey should reconsider its options and pivot from NATO toward Russia. Uh, but uh, other uh, kind of more uh, kind of objective analysts uh, have raised, uh, you know, a cautionary voice saying that a Turkey that is drifting away from NATO uh, could actually be easy prey for Russia and its ambitions in the Middle East. Uh, so uh, a Turkey's so-called pivot toward Russia is easier said than done.